How you doing guys? Thanks for tuning in. This is Dana. Uh, what I want to talk about tonight is your, your basic uh, land purchase agreement. Uh, I think it's an issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, a conventional uh, land purchase agreement is uh, what typically call the HUD, Housing and Urban Development Land Purchase Agreement. It's what's provided by a typical realtor if you're going conventional. Uh, I know from my experience in the past, it's, it's about 12 pages I want to say nowadays. It's probably across the board nationwide nationwide. Uh, a lot of fine print, really confusing. Most of the time what happens is, it's happened to me in the past, you send that out to a potential seller, they receive it. They're not real estate savvy, they just want to get the deal done. They see this 12 or 10 page contract and uh, they get intimidated. Uh, if they try to read it, before you know it they're discouraged, they're afraid they're missing something. Uh, if they don't send it back and if they decide they still want to pursue, a lot of times they'll take it to an attorney. Most of the time, it's not even a real estate attorney. And if he is, even those guys, sometimes they're confused by it. They're reluctant to sign off on it. So it just becomes a big clog in the system. So what I've done over the past, and I've confirmed with a couple of legit real estate attorneys, very savvy, that anything in the United States, if both, both parties sign, the seller and the buyer and date it, it's a legally binding contract. Uh, so once I confirm that, what I decide to do is compress my contract as simple as I could with just the most pertinent information that I needed. So I'm going to go over the basics of a land contract right now, which is a vacant land purchase agreement. Uh, the first thing, because most of my stuff I farm in Florida would be stated as a Florida vacant land purchase agreement. That would be the title of it. Below that, left side would be seller, right side would be buyer, it would be their full name, my full name, mailing address, phone number, email if possible. Uh, the next thing you'd want to include is your legal description below the buyer and seller. The legal description would be typically the physical, mail the physical address of the property you're purchasing, if there is one. Many times in different rural areas, and even in Florida, I found there is no physical address. It'd just be 000 22nd Street. But you want to include that. Uh, below that would be your parcel ID, parcel number, and that's usually a whole row of numbers. Uh, it's usually a bunch of numbers. You just got to make sure when you're doing your parcel ID numbers that they match exactly which property you're trying to buy because there's a lot of times there's 2752, four zeros, and then a bunch of numbers or four or five numbers relating to the legal description, and then more zeros. So just make sure you watch and dot your I's, cross your T's, make sure that's correct on what you're purchasing. Uh, next thing is that you want to have your purchase price there included. It uh, can be Numeric, it, should, it could say $3,200 and then written out $3,200. Uh, if you want, you can include a deposit number. Typically, I go $200, i have gone $500 to try to motivate people. So whatever you want to do is a deposit. Uh, below that would be your closing date. And what I have is on mine is closing date on it before. Typically, I do 90 days. And the reason I do 90 days is because... A lot of times I'm trying to make sure I have a buyer before I buy the property. This way my property isn't tied up long. Uh, a lot of times I want to sign the contract. I use people from the buyer's list. But the, the safe, safest bet is to go 90 days. And typically most sellers won't even flinch at that. They don't even, they don't even ask you about it. If they call you, you say, yeah, man, most likely to serve that. I'm going to try to close much earlier, but I need 90 days just to make sure I get all my due diligence done. And the title company can clear title. Because when it's busy, a lot of times these busy title companies, ones that are good in town or in the area you're in, they're inundated with work. So sometimes even if they're working with you and they're part of your team, it takes some time to get the title clear. So my advice is go 90 days, on it before 90 days of signing day. Uh, the next, next thing underneath that would be very important is your feasibility period, which is your feasibility study period, which means you're going to go check the property out, make sure it is what it is, there's no wetlands, it's buildable, uh, possibly a perks well, you can get a well if there's water, if there's sewer. All the stuff you're doing due diligence falls under your feasibility period. I typically put that on the same thing, 90 days of date of signing. So I pretty much have the length of the contract to purchase match my feasibility study period. This way, for any reason I can't get a buyer, I decided the last second I made a mistake on, on, the, on the deal, I don't really want to buy it. The market's going backwards. There's a lot of things that can happen, and, and you want to be smart. So I always say, do what you do best, buy and sell land, and make sure when you're doing these, these, these deals, 
that you protect yourself. You want everything in your favor. So my advice is to do the 90 days to match the on and before date on the closing date. Next thing, very important, assignability. You can assign but not be released of the liability. Assignable, but you can't be released, meaning at any time you want prior to closing, you can go ahead and sell it to somebody else and you just assign the contract to them. You're not released of the liability, which is not a big deal, basically. But what it's saying is, yes, I can, Dana Brown, assign, give that contract to somebody else. I'll sign it to them. They'll go to closing. They'll pay to closing. They'll pay you for the property. Now, being liable would mean I, sign it to my, I Dana Brown, sign it to John Smith. He gives me the money off the top between the wholesale price and the discount price I sell to him. He gives me a check. He doesn't go to closing. These people, the worst they can do is come back to me and want their deposit back. So I'm liable for that basis. That's generally what happens. The next thing you want to make sure it says this is a legal binding contract. I typically add that in there just to reiterate the fact that yes, it's a legal contract. You're bound until that period to close, uh, meaning the seller. And then below that, which is real important, obviously you got to have this is the seller and buyer. So they print their name, they sign their name, and they date it. You put your name, sign your name, you print your name, and you date it. Now this seller's signature and date corresponds with the date on it before 90 days. So if it's 90 days here, and they sign on the 1st of January, then it's 90 days from the 1st of the seller's signing date. Okay? So I hope you have a basic understanding of what needs to be on a standard uh, purchase agreement, whether it's in Minnesota, South Dakota, wherever it may be, California, New Hampshire, Florida. They're typically the same. It's a legally binding contract. So uh, we're going to touch base on that, and I'll show you a one-page template in the Master Series. I'll provide that for you guys. If you decide to take the lessons, uh, I'll give you a template on that. You can use my template. I'll, I call it the perfect one-page contract. I've, t I've tried many different types of contracts. I've even had them in the past uh, redone and translated into Spanish. Uh, we did some business that most of the properties that we were buying in Florida are owned by people who lived in in uh, Puerto Rico, matter of fact. So uh, it worked real convenient. We just had one of our people uh, trans just translate it over to Spanish, and uh, she she did the deals for us. I mean, it worked out wonderfully. So, and it was a compressed contract. I think at the time it was a two-page contract with a couple of it that was included. So that's my lesson for the day. I hope you guys got have a better understanding of what needs to be done. Trying to keep you guys' life simple. Make sure deals come in, go out. There's no snags in, in the system. And uh, I think that's real important because if you go ahead and use a 12-page or a 10-page, whatever it is nowadays, uh, standard HUD contract, HUD housing and urban development contract, uh, typical convention, conventional real estate contract, uh, it's just going gonna, gonna to throw a big wrench in the system. Most of the time, you'll never see it back. Unless they're in front of you at the table, then you can walk them through. And even then, people are scratching their heads. They're real reluctant because they're afraid they missed something. So that's my lesson for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, if you think it's worth sharing, share it. We'd love to have you subscribe, so just hit the subscribe button. And if you do, just hit the bell along with it. That way you'll be notified every time we have a new video coming out. Uh, I'm trying to provide videos every couple of days at least. I think that's real pertinent uh, to keep you guys updated so you're not sitting around waiting for some more information. Uh, hope you've enjoyed all our other videos. But anyways, you guys have a good remainder of your week. Stay safe. Uh, don't, be, don't be greedy. Always be generous. Be kind. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be safe. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.